look at how much you've gotten done. You've set yourself quite a task, young lady. Yeah, it's hard work. I've still got about three more pages left from the chapter I read Chris yesterday. Hmm. You seeing him again tonight? Mm-hmm. Meeting him later at the library. Oh, you're spending quite a bit of time with Chris lately. I like him. It wasn't too long ago that you broke up with Rodney. Rodney has nothing to do with it. Are you sure? Are you sure you're not using Chris for your own needs? My needs? What needs? I think you ought to be able to answer that one yourself. No, I, I can't. You tell me. Well, you could be using Chris's obvious interest to get over your own feelings for Rodney. It's ridiculous. Now, don't tell me you don't find Chris's attentions flattering to you. I enjoy his company. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. As long as you're not leading him on. By reading to him? From rulings of the State Superior Court, January 1930 to December 1950. Well, beauty is in the ear of the listener as well as the eye of the beholder, you know. You also know Chris is attracted to you. Why don't you just say it? You don't want me to see Chris because he's blind. Ah, don't make me have to be a hypocrite, Alice. No, it's true. You're like everybody else. You see Chris as some kind of freak, a blind law student who can play the piano. I see him as a normal young man, capable of the same normal feelings as any other young man, but with a very special problem. Do you realize how deeply you could hurt that boy? Chris is lonely. I'm lonely. We're friends, that's all. Well, suppose he begins to look at you as something more than just a friend. You won't. Allison, you know, ever since your experience in the hospital, you've, you've had a way of, of wanting people and then of not wanting them. You know, Rodney was able to put up with Rodney you. never needed me. Well... I'm not sure that's true. However, that's not the point. The point is, Chris, if you're playing with his feelings... I'm not. ...even without meaning it, then you're being cruel, Alice. You're being very cruel. Allison. Hello, Mother. Oh, sweetheart. Something's happened. Chris won't be able to meet you tonight. Why not? What happened? Well, I just spoke to Sandy Weber, and uh, Chris had a fall. They've taken him to the hospital. The hospital? What happened? Well, has it been an accident? It seems it wasn't an accident. Sandy said that Ann Howard got him all upset and fell off the wharf. Miss Howard. Good evening. Kind of quiet, isn't it? Yeah. Everybody went to watch the accident. Heard about it. Keep an eye on things, will you, Eli? I want to get a couple of bottles from the cellar. Uh, yeah. Would you care for some company? I don't have much choice, do I? <laughs> no. I guess not. I'm afraid I'm a pretty dull conversationalist, Mr. Carson. Oh, I doubt that. All I can seem to think about is the weather, all kinds of weather, hot weather, cold weather, dry. It's very changeable, don't you think? Yes, it is. What do you suppose causes that, Mr. Carson? Well, there's the ocean, the wind, air pressure. I always thought our New England weather was, uh, oh, I don't know, 
something that just, uh, you know, happened, like accident. Nothing just happens, Miss Howard. The weather's kind of like people. You can't tell what they're going to do, but you usually can find out how they've done it. What you're saying is that there's no such thing as an accident. That's not what I said. I told you I'm not a good conversationist. I'm also a poor listener. Accidents happen, but it takes two to make them. Not all the time. We're veering away from the weather, Mr. Geist. I guess we're both thinking about something else. I was just passing by when the ambulance left. From what I heard, the boy wasn't bad hurt. He was. He must have been. He only fell down a couple of feet. It was my fault. Did you push him? Of course not. As I said, I was passing by on my way home. But it appeared to me that you were hurt. Maybe worse than the boy. How could you know how badly you were hurt? I don't. Neither do you. Maybe he's all patched up and on his way home now. Well, could be. You know? <laughs> My son, Elliot, fell off of that same wharf when he was a kid during the rainstorm, went plunk on his head. What happened? His mother tanned his backside. He was wearing a Sunday suit. <laughs> if only I could be sure that Chris was all right. Well, you can't do it, staying here. I think I should go to the hospital. That's really what you want to do, isn't it? Get hurt? How about this? It's sore. All right, Chris, you want to try and sit up, please? Dizziness? I feel like I'm falling. All right, my big deal. Doctor. Rossi. How soon can I get out of here? I'm going to keep you here for a while, take a few pictures. I don't like hospitals. I know. Neither do I sometimes. Just try and relax. Send up a couple of attendants to take Mr. Weber to x-ray, please. How is it? Well, we're going to keep him here for a while for observation. Concussion? The same routine they went through before? If he does have a concussion, it's a mild one. What happened? Well, I told you. Chris isn't as lucky as the rest of us. He doesn't always see who's coming up behind him. Look, well, just tell me your story, will you? No story. And Colby, uh, pardon me, Ann Howard, saw Chris sitting on the wharf, and she came over and bugged him. About what? The only song she knows how to sing, about how it wasn't her fault the first time. She came to him. That's what I said. Yes, but is that what happened? I was there. I saw it, Doctor. She badgered him until he couldn't take it anymore. Keep your voice down. Are you afraid the truth might hurt your ears, Doctor? It is the truth, you know. I mean, he got up, and he tried to get away from her, and she followed him. She wouldn't leave him alone, so he tried to run. Are you trying to tell me that she... Pushed him? 
No, not this time. She's gotten smart. Only I saw it, this time and the last time. You didn't see my brother the last time, did you, doctor? His face looked about the same as it does now, only, only more cuts, more bruises, and more blood. A lot more blood all over his shoes, all over the back of his shirt. Look. Well? Pop off like that again in this hospital in front of a patient. I don't care that your mother. I told you you were backing a loser. You helped her, protected her. Now how are you gonna jump, big man? Wait. Chris, tell me what happened out there. I'm right here. It was like my brother said. All right. Continuing story of Peyton Place. You'll have to face Stephen, no matter where I am. And you'll face him with me. You must believe that. You've got to believe that I'm telling you the truth. You've got to. I want you to stay away from my patient. As long as Chris Webber's in this hospital, I don't want you anywhere near him. 